Hey, I'm Max Imbron for PCZ.com, and today we're going to set up a camera remote. If you look here below, we have all the pieces we need to set up a simple camera remote. we got your camera, two different lenses. You can choose from which one you want, depending on the angle of view that you want to get. Got an angle finder in case you need to set up your angles and pre-focus and stuff. This is also a magnifier, so you can use that to focus uh, manually on your subject. We've got a tabletop tripod that you can use in the field. You would just put the camera on there, like that, and set it up so that you can pre-focus, say, on a soccer field or something like that. Um, got my usual roll of gaffer tape. I've got two different pre-trigger cables. You need this to connect the pocket wizards to the camera. And now I'm going to show you how it's actually done. So first things first, we're going to set up our camera. I've already got my camera set up for the settings that I like when I shoot at the uh, arenas here. But normally you want to make sure you check your exposure, get everything right, take a couple of test shots, and then once you have it all set up, that's when you start worrying about pre-focusing and all the other things like setting up the remote. But you got to make sure your exposure is right. If it's a bad picture, it doesn't matter how well you remote it. I usually take two different lenses, either a fisheye or my 17-40 to 40 whenever I do a remote. These are the two I use the most. You can use other lenses like a 16 to 35, a 24 to 70, but they tend to be a little bit heavier. And so sometimes when you put them on their stands, they'll fall over. So you either have to prop them up or go with a lighter lens. I like the 17 to 40. It's not that expensive. It's fairly light. And I also like the fisheye. Again, the fisheye is great because it gives you a different view for what you want to shoot, especially with remotes. I like to shoot a remote where I shoot a, a tight composition with a 70 to 200 but the actual camera, the remote itself, will be shooting a wide shot. So I can get two different angles or two different perspectives of, it, of an image. I'll get something you know, very tight action-wise, and then I'll get something very loose with, with the background and the, the fans and everything going crazy. So I'm going to go with the 17 to 40 this time. Let's go ahead and set that up like you normally would set up for a shoot. Then we're gonna need to set up our pocket wizards. You have pocket wizards. I have three of them, but you only really need one for each unit. I need one for the camera that I'm gonna be shooting with, and this is gonna trigger this pocket wizard remotely that's gonna be connected to the remote camera. You need a pre-trigger cable to connect the remote camera to the pocket wizard. On your camera, you just take that out. And you're going to see there's pins for the pre-trigger cable. Just match that up. Now what a pre-trigger cable does as opposed to a standard cable is it allows you to go between normal and pre-trigger. When you're in the pre-trigger mode, it keeps the uh, camera awake and ready to, for action. It's at any time, if you press the button, it'll just shoot. It's, it's akin to uh, having the, the shutter button pressed halfway down. When I'm setting up a pocket wizard, I like to clear and reset it. On a Multimax, that's pretty easy. You hold down the C button, and then you just go ahead and turn it on. If you see, it'll say clear, reset. That means it's going to start at its baseline settings. I like doing that because that way, each time out, I know I'm starting from the same exact baseline of settings for the pocket wizard. Once I'm, I have this one set in receiver mode, I'll connect it to my camera, and then I'll set it to one of the channels. I like, you know, I like to mix it up, so for today, I'm going to use channel 15. For the transmitter, I'm going to do the same thing. Just clear and reset, set it to transmit, and then also go to channel 15. The first test you're going to do is see if it fires. Now that we know it fires, we can keep going. All right, so now that we have the camera firing, we still have to actually set it up to pre-focus and everything. If you have live view on your camera, you can go ahead and use that to actually visualize what you're going to set up. Otherwise, you should really use the angle finder. The angle finder is going to let you use like a periscope and you can view through that and manually pre-focus. Otherwise, you're going to have to lay prone on the floor trying to look at the screen. Next, we need to figure out a mount. I brought this little tabletop mount and this is great for soccer fields where you would just put the camera on top and set it all up. But for basketball, you have a little bit of leeway. I've actually learned this from a lot of other shooters. If you take a couple of AA batteries or AAA batteries and gaffer them together, this makes the perfect floor remote. You just tape it to the bottom of this and you're set to go. Yeah. So 
basically I set this over here. I set up the gaffer. And now the camera is ready to go. Because of the way the AA batteries work, you can move it back or forth to adjust the height. But in general, this is the perfect basketball remote because it's very low to the ground. Now using live view, which you can't see, I'm actually going to zoom in on the rim. If you see that, I can manually focus using live view only. And once I have it locked in, I'm set. One thing I like to do is once I have my framing set up and once I have everything focused, make sure you set your lens to manual focus. And then once you're done with that, zoomed and everything, take a piece of gaffer and tape over the zoom ring and the manual focus button. That way none of the settings will move now that you've adjusted it perfectly. Also, because of the way I have this set up, you need to be able to quickly pick up your remote in case anyone's gonna fall at it or step on it. But you also wanna be able to set it back up really quickly. So what I do is I take a couple pieces of gaffer, split it real quickly, and then create a cross section. If you see now, I can just pick up my remote put it back down and I already have a basic idea of where it's going to be. I can use live view to enhance that to make sure, but in general, if someone's coming at it, I can just pull it. And then when the play is dead, when there's a timeout, I can just put it right back there, use live view to set it all up, and I'm good to go. Now I told you we have the Pocket Wizard set up to the same channel, and we tested this out. So if you take You may not see it, but it is firing. Now all you need to do is set up one of your cameras that you're gonna use. In this case, I have a Mark III and a 70 to 200. Again, I like using the remote for the wide shot, and then I use the 70 to 200 for the, the more telephoto shot, the tighter action. Put the pocket wizard right on top of there. Make sure it's nice and tight. Turn it on. And we're good to go. Quick test. And you have a remote set up. Now I just shoot like that, like I normally would, and this will shoot the wide at the same time. And that's your remote set up.